Hey there, it's Professor S, and for the next five minutes or so, I want to continue to talk about passive membrane transport processes. I, I began this with videos on membrane permeability and on simple diffusion, um, and I've done a couple on channel mediated diffusion, and now I want to go in another direction and talk about carrier proteins. So with that said, let's hop on into the animator. This video is really a follow-up to my two videos on channel-mediated diffusion. In those videos, I was talking about integral membrane proteins twisted into tunnel-like shapes to allow small particles like ions that can't engage in simple diffusion to passively move through the cell membrane. But that left out this guy, a monosaccharide sugar, and, and this guy, an amino acid. They're small organic particles, too big for channels, but they still need a way to passively move through the membrane. And that way they do it is through what's called a carrier protein, which operates in a different fashion than a channel. Now, before I get into it, pay attention to the difference because it's critical. But also, as always, as a way of disclaimer, I'm trying to show you conceptually how this protein works, not its actual physical inner workings. So just bear that in mind. So let's make this guy transparent and see what happens. Now you should see a binding site in there that looks like it matches this uh, monosaccharide sugar. So this is a carrier for the sugar in question. When the sugar moves into the protein and interacts with the binding site, we get our induced fit. And as is always the case with proteins when their environment changes and protein binding to something is its environment changing, its conformation changes. And in the case of this protein, the conformational change is this door inside the protein swings and inverts the location of the monosaccharide sugar. When it swings all the way around, its affinity for that monosaccharide decreases and it releases it, allowing the monosaccharide to translocate from one to the other side of the membrane. Uh, but in addition, that release of the, of the monosaccharide causes another conformational shift that completes the swing back to our starting position. And we're ready to repeat. Now at no point in any of this did you see ATP or another energy source involved? This is not active transport. This was a passive process. The sugar in this case is moving through the membrane using this carrier from high to low concentration. And if you were watching that animation thinking that kind of looks like a revolving door, yes, that's exactly what I was going for. That's the analogy I've used for years to differentiate carrier proteins from channels. And we'll let this thing play for a little bit while I talk. A channel protein is perfectly analogous to walking through an open doorway. You're the particle going through the doorway, and all the doorway does is be there. You don't have to interact with the doorway, you just pass through it. In the case of the carrier protein, the substance moving through it has to bind to it, interact with it, and then move through it, exactly like a revolving door. You have to engage the mechanism of the door, the door has to translocate so that you can move through to the other side. And the importance of this is that revolving doors, carrier proteins, are subject to saturation. They have limits as to how many particles can be moved at a time. Whereas channels are effectively able to allow for faster and faster channel mediated diffusion as uh, their gradient gets bigger, there's an upper speed limit to these carriers and once that concentration gradient is achieved, you can't get carrier mediated diffusion to go any faster. And so the fact that carrier mediated diffusion is subject to saturation is really what differentiates it and separates it from channel mediated diffusion. Uh, and that's what I want to say about it. Now I'm going to be doing a video blog post at some point on the distinction between these two and the term facilitated diffusion, which I've discreetly avoided using, but that's a separate topic. What you've seen here is carrier mediated diffusion. Let's go do another take. What are you wearing? Is that a GoPro? Yeah, it's a GoPro. What's your issue? Why are you wearing a GoPro? 
Well, come on. I, I thought it would be good for market research to you know, know what the people who are watching these videos are doing while they're watching. And so I just figured if I'm shooting the video and wearing the GoPro, we'll be able to see what they're doing. That's not how the technology works, you idiot. You sure? Yes, just do the take. Hey, this is Professor S. If you enjoyed that video, found it helpful, here's a couple others that you may also enjoy. And don't forget to hit the button to subscribe. And I guess we'll never know what you're thinking since he says the GoPro won't work that way. Oh, dear God, cut.